thank you for the people that are going to attend this podcast and going to listen to this podcast. Uh, so today we are again a, a great guest. Uh, this is Cecilia from CSTI. She's going to tell us everything she does uh, within the uh, NGO and what are her goal and her action plan in terms of circular economy in Kenya and in Africa. A lot of learnings, so prepare to be concentrated, a lot of things to learn here. About Costalab, quick one. So Costalab, what we do, we are aiming at making partnership in R&D succeed. What it means is that we have developed a platform with the key manufacturing players like BSF, Anchor, Size, Alitin, and so on, where we actually help the innovation managers and people like Cecilia, even NGOs and other associations to map their innovation partners, whether they are from the academic world, startups, corporations. So who are there? Who are your uh, innovation partners? What are the key capabilities? As well as providing you a place, a co-working space, which we uh, which we call, where you can actually, with all your partnering teams that are inside and outside the organization, you can actually structure the way you are going to bring your innovation to markets or how you're going to collaborate together in a systematic manner. That's it about Postlab. I'm glad to introduce today uh, Cecilia. Just quick word with uh, my co-founder Santi today also joining me because we are going to make a deep dive with Cecilia on how she use Postola. But that's it for us. Cecilia, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Sebastian Santi. Uh, Cecilia Wandiga, I'm Executive Director of the Center for Science and Technology Innovation here in Nairobi. We are a UNESCO associated center. Our mandate is to transfer advanced technology to the benefit of the community. Uh, currently, we're working, we've been around since 1998 and met uh, Sebastian and Santi and the Postal Lab team through um, our network. Uh, like any research nonprofit, we have networks of uh, different providers and, and systems that we're working with. And we were very happy uh, to be connected because um, the Postal Lab platform helps us solve a lot of the um, documentation and challenges and, and, and process flow challenges that we have as we're moving through um, interaction within the academia corporate sector. And okay, thank you, me... uh, Cecilia. Maybe you can just, uh, uh, can you tell us about what is CSTI? What is your, what is the mission? I mean, what is the vision? What do you want to achieve with, uh, with your organization? Please. So um, basically what we're doing, we recognize that um, there's a lot of academic research that goes on, uh, both within the African context and in general. There's uh, obviously a lot of useful knowledge, but how to transfer that knowledge in a way that enables um, communities and co corporations to make use of the knowledge. And in that, what we start finding is that, um, uh, the, so the, we have to understand two basic things. One, um, discovery with, so the purpose of academic research is uh, discovery and innovation. Bring things to life in science that nobody has ever thought of before. The problem with something that you've never thought of before is how do you use it? Um, uh, for those of us who are older, um, if we remember when we had landline phones and somebody told us uh, that we had we were going to be using uh, uh, handheld phones that had portable computers on them, that took a lot of preparation. Uh, in terms of the general psyche, not just for the companies uh, and once the devices were released, but also for the end user. And within this new concept that is coming out with this push towards net zero, uh, which is uh, reducing emissions and looking at the materials that we have in the built environment and how do we reuse the materials and not just for example, take plastics and use them as plastics, but take plastics and use them as something else. Uh, there's a lot of chemistry involved, and that's how we approach these uh, mm -hmm. innovations in terms of trying to understand where the motivation is for both parties, but also mm -hmm. recognizing the barriers. Uh, it's expensive to experiment. Um, it's expensive mm -hmm. to scale a new product in market. Uh, how mm -hmm. much you know, if you've never done it before and you don't know what the demand is going to be, how do you know how much of the raw material you're going to need? 
um, what is the performance? I mean, you design something in a lab and you don't necessarily design it for unexpected uses. So um, if, if you're thinking like my favorite is um, you design flooring and you say, oh, everybody's gonna use your standard cleaning chemicals. And then you say, oh, there's somebody who has a, a flame throwing business and you know the floor product damaged because their live flame thrower fell on the floor. Well, you hadn't thought of that as a design parameter because it's not a standard use. So um, all of these things it, what is what slows down innovation. And of course, compared to everybody asked me about software, uh, the um, chemicals industry and the building materials industry is a lot more heavily regulated. So it also will take time to screen. It's probably closer to the pharmaceutical in some way in terms of the screening. Yeah, so just because you were mentioning, let's say, uh, one of the, uh, your, your key, let's say, strategic partners. So uh, for, the, for the audience here, so it's uh, one of them is ISIC. So it is the International Sustainable Chemistry, Chemistry Collaborative Center. Uh, it's a German association that is fostering and uh, supporting uh, chemical, I mean, uh, sustainable chemistry uh, in Germany and across the world. And it's actually one of the partners that Cecilia was referring to. So just for, for information for the audience. Um, thank you very much for, for, for that, Cecilia. Um, so, I mean, this is quite complex what you are, what you are, you are doing. And it reminds, reminds me of the, the early days of Postalab where our goal was to find a way to disseminate the early research findings that you can have in the academic world and to accelerate this knowledge transfer to the, to the corporation. Well, this is not, this step is already quite complicated. And once, as you explained, once you are, what you have information is actually how to make it, uh, let's say, to, to the market and managing all this complexity. So thank you for that. So how do you, actually about this thing, um, how do you manage uh, the challenges that are associated to putting this partnership together? How do you address this? And what are the main challenges, sorry? So main challenges, uh, one is uh, um, scope of awareness and, and partnering with uh, ISC3 is one, uh, being able to, so if you're sitting in Nairobi and somebody asks you, an investor asks you, is what you're designing scalable? And you ask them, what do you mean by scalable? You think, okay, it's, uh, can you manufacture more? And they say, no, for us, scalable means, is it equally relevant in Nairobi and in Berlin? Well, then you'll need to talk to somebody in Berlin to find that out because it's kind of hard to <laughs> imagine that on your own. Um, so um, definitely, and, and they have a network of networks. So reaching out to entities that have networks of networks. Um, uh, the UN system, also UNESCO is a, a system that has network of networks so that um, you're able to be able to just um, share what the daily industry or daily use case experience would be. Um, one of the things, for example, when we started working with ISC3 and they were looking at, um, can we do circular plastics and building materials? Well, in uh, a lot of Western, you have the window casings tend to be some kind of PVC or vinyl um, uh, window casings. In uh, the Kenya, at least the Nairobi setting, we mostly use metals. So if you're thinking that you're going to have a heavy market in uh, Kenya with uh, recycling of uh, window plastic window casings, well, we don't really use those. So those are the kind of things like uh, going to this in terms of market gap and, and, and then also what is affordable. Um, I try to tell people, it, you know, something, a building material at 500 uh, euros might seem, quote unquote, affordable, depending on what kind of quantity it is. But um, as a general rule of thumb, uh, that price range is out of the reach of most of who are going to be buying materials, building materials in the African context. So when you also try to meet all the quality and engineering standards, which also drive up the cost when we're seeing, so that the, the challenge becomes, how do you get to those same material performance standards or product performance standards? Uh, without driving the cost up to uh, where it's unattainable for different users, because a lot of times in the emerging uh, 
country context, everybody says, oh, well, you don't have quality materials. Well, they come at a cost. <laughs> and a lot of that is the development cost. So we, we, we try and have those conversations as much as possible. And also um, the other part is uh, usability. If you don't, uh, like uh, I had a friend said, if you don't have apples, you don't invent the apple peeler. Uh, so um, uh, when, you, when you don't have a product in your uh, daily ecosystem, um, the use, figuring out why you need it uh, is also a usability challenge. And, and what is also very much interesting is, and I think there's a lot of to take is, is your, your way of thinking through these things. And for me, this is, this, is, this is a different one we may have here in Europe. It's a different thinking process. And I think there's a lot to take on the way you think about it. So thank you very much for that. I uh, appreciate this uh, a lot, um, Cecilia. Uh, let's go to like the, you to the think next about question. it with um, sorry, you can think about it. Everybody says the African proverb of it takes a village. And so it, it, it's taking that concept into uh, the r and d space. Uh, how do you grow that village so that you can you can sit down around the fire and have that talk? I mean we we are we have we have slightly you ahead of time. can can you because I mean, I guess a lot of us uh, heard about it take a village, but I don't think a lot of us really understand what it means. Can you can you slightly go into details of what it means exactly? So um, in the village framework, there's um, uh, when a, like let's say somebody is to uh, introduce a new idea. Uh, deep, there's also uh, how it gets introduced. Uh, normally, if you're younger, you have to consult with the elders. Uh, think of that in the industry environment as those who have seniority experience, uh, uh, industry and uh, depth of knowledge or expertise. Uh, you also talk with your peers before presenting to the elders and you ask them, do you think that they would allow us to present this information? Do you think it would be relevant? Um, sometimes you need to get um, supporters if it's something that you anticipate that the elders are gonna say, and elders could be senior experts, they could be regulators. Um, if you think they're gonna say no, um, you really have to sit down and talk about um, how do you present yourself? How do you explain why there's a need for this change? Uh, then uh, what tends to happen is uh, the word gets around, uh, the ideas is, is shared, and um, there's a lot, there's a discussion first among those who grant the ability to present to the community. Uh, there'll probably be a little screening uh, if you're used to pitching towards investors. Uh, you know, you're, you're trying to get into that market. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's as nerve wracking as that it can be. Um, and uh, you'll get a lot of uh, questions and, and uh, not only about what you're presenting, but your motives, your, your ideology and, and why do you feel that this is an, a, a pressing need for the community to be reacting to. And then you typically will have some kind of time where everybody, you know, maybe two weeks, depending on the urgency, maybe two months, where everybody in the community is given time to reflect and think about and ask questions before coming back to listen to your official speech. So when you when you come back into that speech and, and in, in that time, you'll probably get questions. Um, there might be uh, coalitions that form, sometimes they're not, but uh, that you, you get to learn and hear and see how people are reacting to your idea. Then when you come and present, it's uh, everybody is there from, from uh, the, the baby who's just learning how to speak to the most senior elder in the community who might not have been at your presentation. And you stand up and you present and everybody waits patiently until you're finished talking. And then the questions begin. And uh, the questions come uh, anywhere from uh, somebody's excited and they want to use it to uh, reminding you of the history of the village and when there have been problems with a particular situation and why they see that this might 
bring a prop, the same type of problem? And uh, why are you bringing a problem into the community or, or things like that? So it's, it's, it's a lot similar to going through the corporate boardroom screening, just slower and uh, arguably a lot more inclusive because um, you, you have everybody sit, seated there talking to you. Thank you very much. I mean, uh, frankly speaking, I, I didn't know what it means re uh, really. So I think it's a very good exp explanation. So in some make me think about design thinking. So I, I have I have a feeling that the guy from design thinking, they went over there, they studied the it takes a village and then they brand it, you know, in another way. But basically, <laughs> the, see, they didn't invent so much. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that tends to happen a lot. Um, uh, the, the African environment is tends to be, I, I call it the original open source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very good. Thank you much for that. Thank you much for that, Sashi. I appreciate it a lot. Um, so let's move on to the to the next question. Uh, let me up. So um, let's go right now. I mean, in the in your operation, let's go into your engine. Um, I say, what's what's your daily uh, let's say job to be done in, in 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 your organization, and how let's say as you mentioned, how Postal is actually supporting this process. So Senti will uh, take uh, say uh, care of this part of our discussion today. Um, so, Santia, and hand over to yeah. you to talk about operation and product. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Um, so, you, you are uh, what we name in, in Postal Lab, so in, in products. So, you are a power user in, in Postal Lab because you use a platform a lot. Uh, you give a lot of feedback, uh, valuable feedback that we, we, we take on board. So, but before Postal Lab, so how did you discover our platform and uh, what uh, motivated you to, to become, to start using it, to become a power user? Yeah, so uh, through, uh, uh, as Sebastian said, through the ISC3 network, we've been asking them for uh, ideas on different tools. Uh, and what the, the initial tool we, we had is similar to what Sebastian was saying is, how do we show them what we have in terms of whether it's the articles or, or the pipeline of ideas that we're trying to work on uh, so that they can think about um, areas where we can uh, coincide. And, and uh, explaining that a little more, we have three areas that we're working with them on, circular building materials, um, uh, looking at the possibility of uh, locally developed hydrogen fuel technologies and also biocides in terms of uh, chemical leasing. And this is uh, the perfect example of what happens in uh, African village interrogation when we brought in the concept chemical leasing. The first question was, are you, this is from chemists, are you telling us that um, the chemicals they're using do not get consumed in the reaction process. And we're like, no, they do. And like, so how can you lease it? Lease is you have an asset and you return it. So why are you telling us we're gonna lease a chemical? <laughs> so, um, and then when, when we started talking about, you know, focusing on the performance requirements and, and instead of say, se selling bulk chemicals, you perform, uh, focus on the outputs. And like, that's not leasing. That's that service, that servitization. So this, these are the kind of uh, interrogations that, and we needed a way to start capturing that. We also need a way uh, to start aligning ourselves. So sustainable chemistry, people off, often ask, what is that? Um, and uh, it's not just, so we have the green chemistry principles and atom efficiency and all of that, but we are also talking about making chemical processes that are less harmful to biological processes. And it sounds easy on paper, <laughs> uh, but it's easier said than done. And also anticipating um, future effects. Uh, and, and so we get into a lot of toxicology. So here I have a definition by uh, the Task Force for Nature Related financial disclosures, because also one of the things we try to do is 
design things in a way that bring in investors. And it's a long uh, uh, paragraph just to say that when you're disclosing a risk and the effects of nature, you should also um, start seeing how you're going to quantify how this product creates changes in the ecosystem. So if we're thinking about cutting trees, it's very easy to think about how that creates a change in the ecosystem. But as we'll see in a second, uh, um, when you're looking at taking a circular product, which is waste banana peels, there's a lot more layers to think about. Um, so I didn't know, Santi, if you wanted to uh, ask a few more questions before I jump into the example or? Uh, yes, yes, uh, so uh, only one or two questions. So um, what aspects of, of Postal App or platform uh, do you find most valuable in your daily work? So, what... the, so um, for those who are familiar with the uh, Lean Six Sigma philosophy and, and Kanbans, you have uh, the Kanban workflow process and being able to take uh, ideation and put them into uh, Kanban cards. Uh, and 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 flow through the process. So um, what we've learned is that where science and finance coincide is on process thinking. And both groups, uh, scientists and financial people, are really good at itemizing and dissecting uh, processes involved. Um, that's not necessarily my strength. My strength is sort of landscape thinking. But um, when you when you go into a process, uh, people who are very good at process analytics, uh, the, the Postal Lab platform is really helpful. And you have um, already built in some, like, for example, the, um, I think it's ISO 44, thousand one for the yeah. um uh yeah for the partnerships mm -hmm. and the checklists on how to manage uh relationships effectively the other tool that we find really helpful is to be able to take um adobe pdfs like i took um some ethical uh pro processes uh, for research ethics i are inter inter um, internal review board ethics and was able to take those PDFs, upload them, and then the AI tool create the processes and workflows cards instead of me trying to figure out how I'm going to reconstitute that into a Kanban card. So that is very, very, very helpful. Um, I think that you answered all, all the questions I had. So maybe for the people that doesn't know Postal Lab or has not used yet uh, Postal Lab, uh, what will be? What will will you give? Um, which advice? What advice will you give to someone that uh, who is just starting uh, to use Postal Lab, based on your experience and, and insights? I would say uh, start with a a, a specific project. Um, a lot of times when people uh, are, are trying out a new software. You tend to go into the system and uh, just try and get a feel for what it is. Uh, that would, in my opinion, or at least my experience or my learning, the way my mind works, it create, would create a lot of confusion. Uh, it's better to start with a very tangible project and uh, a particular outcome and then try to put that process into the Postal Lab system and see what you get out of it. And in doing that, uh, you, you start to learn what the system capabilities are. And also, um, as Santi and Sebastian you know, start asking, like I pester you with questions almost every week. So start asking questions that also help you understand uh, how to adapt your process thinking uh, into the, the process flow for the postal lab. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, from my side, uh, I don't have more questions. So I uh, just wanted to thank you, Cecilia. So before to change to another topic. So thank you for because you are giving a lot of feedback, as you say. So a lot of interaction between us and, and happy to, to have you on board as our user. So and yeah, just keep keep doing things in Postal Lab and keep giving giving feedback because this is also powerful for all all the users that are in the our ecosystem. So thank you. So. Thanks for watching.
Stay tuned for part two of this video, where Cecilia goes more in depth on her work at CSTI in Nairobi, and also discusses a few examples, such as the banana peel method. See you soon.